If you're on the sewing side of Instagram, you've probably seen the reel about this style of dress a few times. I know I have. A completely adjustable apron dress. Now I'm familiar with adjustable fashion. I've made a few similar projects, such as the Kelly coat skirt, which you can adjust the tightness around the waist. I've also made a modernized Regency dress, which has waist and bust points that are adjustable. And I made this sort of 14th century inspired supportive shift, which again, adjustable around the waist and bust. So I wanted to give this a shot. I'm patterning this directly on my body and I'm using some salvage material. So yes, this is a pillowcase that I cut a head hole in and I'm just marking off where my waist is, approximately where I'd like the neckline to be. And I'm also gonna mark off where the shoulder is. I found this 100% linen duvet cover set in the IKEA as is section for half price. The fabric is beautiful. And with the price of linen being what it is, I thought this would be a great way to get material for this project. Once I cut those little extra bits off, you can see it's starting to take shape as a bodice. But most of the other creators I saw didn't add any darts or seaming for the bust. But to be fair, most of the other creators I saw were not super curvaceous. I have a pretty big apex between my shoulder and my bust. My shoulders are pretty narrow. So in order to make this work, I need some darting in the bust. So this is where my version of this dress is going to vary from some of the other versions I've seen on social media, but I'm just marking out my bust darts here and it does make quite a difference. Now I'm going to use all the parts of the duvet that I can, including those little ties. I'm just taking this edge right here, this very thick hem, and measuring it to my waist. I want it to be almost enough to meet in the back, but I'm leaving a few inches, and that's where the adjustability is. So I can tighten it, but it will comfortably sit a little bit open in the back. The whole conceit of this is that the overlapping pieces cover enough, but also give you enough kind of wiggle room if you're feeling a little bloated, which has been a big issue for me since moving back to America. Um, I have a lot of food intolerances now that I didn't used to. So I do like adjustability in my clothing. So I'm just unpicking this edge here. And then I am thread pulling. So in fabrics like linen, it's not too difficult to basically extract one singular thread and you're gonna give yourself a perfectly straight line to cut down. So I'm cutting this in half to give me my front and back pieces. It's a little bit tedious, but it really does help assure you you're getting a very crisp cutting line. Better than just marking it with a pen or a chalk. It also allows you to cut without a big cutting table because I don't have a large cutting table at the moment. I don't really have a designated workspace currently. So I can just kind of cut along this perfect line I've made and be assured that it is straight even if I'm sitting on the couch. Or laying it across the rug. I did not cut the rug. Please be proud of me. So this is going to be the front panel of my skirt. So as you can see, it's doubled over. So it's a little more than double the amount I need because we're gathering up the skirt. I'm also taking that hemmed edge we took before and I'm going to turn it into our waistband. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on front and back. So some of these steps I'm only showing for the front part, some I'm only showing for the back, but you can kind of fill in the blanks with your imagination, you very clever people. So I'm ironing this flat to remove all of their fold and seam lines. I expected because this was a manufactured piece, it would be pretty crisp, but the edges are actually a little wonky. So I'm folding this to be as exactly in half as possible, despite the slight variations on that edge cut. And I'm pressing it to keep that crisp. I'm also gonna fold under the edges to be kind of our seam allowance. I'm going to connect this first to that little torso piece I made out of the pillowcase. So I'm just finding my exact center line of the waistband and the exact center line of the torso. I'm aligning those up. Again, since this is not based on a pattern, I didn't have any notches or anything to cut with. So I have to line everything up just kind of based on the math, which you can measure this out directly or you can do what I did a little more intuitively and kind of line things up, just folding things in half. 
So now I'm attaching the skirt. Now that I've sewn that band to the torso, I'm doing the same thing with the skirt. I'm marking the center point and connecting it. And I also ran a gathering thread along the very top edge, as you can see. And now that it's pinned, I'm gonna grab that thread and start gathering the fabric down. So since I've pinned out the center point, I know exactly how much fabric needs to fit from the center to one side and the center to the other. So I'm not gathering all at once, I'm gathering from both sides. So I actually put two separate threads from the center point. Once we have our fabric gathered down, secure it with a back stitch, sew it on. As you can see, we have the front half of the dress is starting to look like something, it's pretty exciting. And now we just have to basically repeat this process with the back of the dress. So again, I'm measuring out just to make sure I have enough left of that kind of hem border because I'm going to use that again to be the back waistband, but that one's going to have to tie in the front. So for the front half of the dress that gets tied behind me, I just use those little actually duvet cover ties, which you'll see in a bit. But for the front, I wanted it all to be that nice, thick hem border fabric. And I'm just sitting on the floor cutting in my lap. A typical Tuesday night for me. Again, not recommended, but it is what it is at the moment. For this, since we already had that front half on, it's a bit heavy, I decided to do the gathering draping on my dress form. So you get a good look at how I fold it over and pressed the edges of that waistband here, that it has those nice seam allowances built in. And what I do after I attach the waistband, I am going to go in and basically cover this with basically another waistband. So I cut four waistband pieces, two for the front, two for the back, because as you can probably see throughout this video, this linen is fraying quite a bit where it's been cut. So the simplest way for me to make sure it doesn't unravel through washing and wearing is to kind of encase all the edges. So for the inner seams, that means folding over and just seam finishing them. But for these inner pieces, I thought it'd be a lot easier because I have so many seam lines to just encase it in another layer of waistband. And that is one of my favorite ways to finish off interior waistbands. It makes it less bulky than having to fold over that fabric right at the waist, which might be the narrowest part of your garment. So you can see a little bit of this process here. So these are the ends that I'm going to use to tie the dress off in the front. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of butting those ends up against each other and just trying to keep this as flat and smooth as possible. I also decided to sew by hand just to finish attaching these kind of edges to the inner layer. So as you can see this, this inner layer here, I did the top edge on the machine. I tried to do the bottom edge attached to the skirt on the machine as well, but it just, because of the gathers, they would sometimes catch in kind of odd ways on the back versus the front. So it just seemed a lot easier to go ahead and hand stitch those. Then at the end of what's the front of our dress being tied in the back, I'm just folding over that edge. So that part, the waistband is just as wide as the fabric, whereas in the front, it becomes the ties in the front. So here, the ties I stole from the duvet cover, I'm just attaching one right here on the end. So it's a little bit twisted. I think when it was sewn in the factory, it, it got a little bit of like torsion on it, but because it's gonna be hidden away in the back of the dress, I didn't mind. It's still going to sit smooth enough behind the back of the dress. And so here's my final fit test. You can see it's looking good, it's looking like a real dress. I decide I'm gonna take down the neck a little bit. And as you can see, the back panel, I made it longer than I needed to in the front. So I just cut out a little bit of that, just angled into the waistband. As of today, me recording this, I have still not decided exactly how short I wanna hem this. As you can see, it's kind of foot brushing, ground brushing, which is a little longer than I like but I'm not sure how short I wanna make it. Ankle, mid calf, what do you think would look best? I decided to finish the edges of the neckline and the arm area with some really cute uh, bias tape. 
that I recycled from another project, you might recognize it. I sewed it to the back with the machine just for speed and then to make it look nice on the front side that would show, I hand stitched it, which, you know, because of the overlapping edges is a pretty long stretch that needed to be sewn. So it did take me a couple of days. See, costume change, I'm still sewing. But despite the hand fatigue, I think it was worth it. I think it makes it look really special and it helps with that sort of fraying that the fabric naturally does. So as you can see, it's kind of one big long piece of fabric, but once you start getting into it, it becomes something that looks pretty good, I think. I don't know if anyone would automatically realize that it's not a normal dress. The overlap is enough that I feel pretty secure in it. And I like that I can snug it down when I want to look a little more snatched. <laughs> or I can loosen it up on days when I'm not feeling well. I think that the darting really helps in the bust. And I really do like the unique look of the bias tape. I'm pretty happy with this overall. Do you think you would make a dress like this? I'm gonna take a moment to thank my patrons. You can become one of them by clicking the link below. It helps me to keep doing this nonsense. And here is the ultimate test. When you sit down, does it flap open? I'm very happy to report the answer is no. I can sit and stand and I am not at risk at showing my undergarments. Bye.